Welcome to Main Street. This is your host, Ryan Mack, the show that's helping individuals get jobs, create jobs, and manage money from the jobs. Politics is very important, but it's time to also include economics in the conversation. And that's what we're here to talk about today. But you can't talk about economics without talking about education. And I'm here in the city of Detroit, one of the most influential individuals, Angelique Peterson Mayberry, newly elected school board member for DPSCD. Thank you for coming Good out morning. here today. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Ryan. And so I want to say congratulations on your fabulous run. You. I, I, I was running for school board as well, but I was also rooting for you. Thank and I also you. voted for you. Thank you. And likewise. Well. And I thought that you had a different perspective. You had a fresh perspective. And I, I, I just know you have great things coming up on the school board. So now the first thing, what are some updates that people can hear about? Because everybody's interested about what's what's going on with DPSCD. What are some interesting updates that you might want to share with the folks out there? Well, one thing that, you know, I, I really am excited that we're up in our enrollment. Mm. You know, for the first time in over 16 years, we okay. are over that 50,000 enrollment mark. And so we're excited, but that says a lot. Mm. It says that we are now beginning to win back the trust of parents mm. and even students who want to come to our schools. So that, I have to say, we're really excited excited about that. Um, we have a newly elected school board, as you mentioned, and mm. we also have a new superintendent. Mm. And that is something that is new as well, because we know we've been under emergency management for so long. And so those two dynamics are, are something that we, we're turning a corner, we're trying to make this, this march in a mm. way that people could understand that it's not about me. Mm. It's about us. It's about our students. And so some of the very exciting things is, you know, Randolph Career Tech Center. Okay. You know, we I've are heard about that. Oh, Good. really yeah. excited about the skill trades program that is offered there. It is doing so fabulous mm. that we've had to freeze enrollment. Get out of here. Absolutely. Okay. So we want to duplicate that program in another part of the city so mm. that students will continue to have that. But the goal is to have that type of program in all of our schools. Mm. So, you know, I don't know about you, but back in the day, I had access to tons of things outside of academics in the school. Mm. I did home ec, I had wood shop, I had sewing. And so what we want people to understand is that when children leave Detroit Public Schools, mm. they are prepared for the next step. Whether the next step is college, skill trades, work, mm. or family. They can say that they at least have had some preparation and those are things that they've received in Detroit Public Schools. We have STEM and STEAM and robotics, mm. and we're bringing back the arts and the music. We have exciting chess programs coming mm. in. And so we're really excited at the partnerships that now businesses are understanding and recognizing that they've got to have mm. a, a finger in the DPSCD mm. school system because these are the same students that we are trying to train to become their next employees. Wow. And so what's been the biggest challenge? I know there have been a lot of challenges, maybe things you might not have even expected, mm -hmm. becoming a new school board member. What's been your biggest challenge at becoming funding. a new school board member? Funding. Funding. Adequate funding. You know, there is one pot of money, right? Mm -hmm. And so although we've received a very small increment of increase with per pupil funding, funding remains funding and being able to provide a certified teacher in every classroom. Mm. Those are some of the biggest challenges. But when you think about classroom size, which is an issue as well, you know, if you have 45 kids in a class and you mm. want to break that class to a 22 and a 23, we have a teacher for one, mm. but we don't have a teacher for the other. And so those teachers and those educators that have remained with the district, I applaud them. They are dedicated and committed, but we are also trying to make sure that we attract. Mm. So be able to retain and gain and attract and I think that the one thing that is preventing us from doing that in larger numbers is the amount of money that we can pay these teachers. Mm. So when you think about funding and this one pot of money, in this pot of money, you're trying to bring programming in, you know, you're trying to address security, you're trying to address building infrastructure, and then you're trying to ad address the wages of our educators. And so has there been an outreach in order to have additional private dollars or maybe help uh, supplement some of the lack of funds that you all need? I mean, I know you talked about partnerships, so how is that going? And so that is something that is on the radar right now. There mm. are small meetings beginning to take place around that. Mm. I think what people have to understand and what they need to feel comfortable about is that if, if they've earmarked their funds for a particular thing with DPSCD, mm. they want those funds to be used for that. Right. You know, if I've given you funding for music, don't use it to pay the light bill. Mm. And so that's been, unfortunately, that's been the action and the practice of the past. So we have to now, again, get people to understand and trust us again enough to know that we are being being financially responsible with the funding that we receive. And so now, we, we, I talk about economics all the time. That's my lane. How vital is the, the education of our students, of our youth, 
toward the economic success of our community. So when you think about empowerment, right? So empowerment, we're trying to give people the power and the authority to be successful. Mm. That's just the bottom line. And so it's, it's bigger than academics. It's more so about creating a whole child. Mm. So in a whole child experience, you are prepared when you leave. You may want to be an entrepreneur. Well, then you have should have had some experience in DPSCD mm. so that you know that's a route that you want to take. I'll mention a quick story. Yeah. So with UAW Ford, I'm the community relations director, and so we do a ton of things in the schools. And we were at a particular school, and we were redoing the weight room. Mm. And so I asked that students, because they need to provide sweat equity back to us. Mm. So students had come in, they were going to scrap the equipment that was there, and we were going to paint. So I brought in a professional painter to teach the young boys how to paint, mm. and they were going to paint. There was one young man who he was better than the painter that I brought wow. in, the professional. And when we talked to him and dug a little deep, we tried to find out, where did you get this skill set? He says, oh, I paint all the time. My mm. uncle has rental properties, and I go around and do it all the time. But he had no idea that that was actually a profession a business. that yeah. he can make money doing. And so it's those type of experiences that now for him, the trajectory of his life may have changed. Mm. You know, he didn't want to go to college. He doesn't want to do that. But knowing that if you want to do this, something that you love and you organically have the skill set to do, mm. let us try to nurture that and mold that so that you can be successful when you leave our program. And so the, you, you, that last election was very, very intense for everybody, people in it and outside of it, right? So... But people want to should know how can they get involved because again you don't have to be on a school board in order Absolutely to participate because everybody has children. That's right. Even if you don't have biological children, all of those now fifty thousand students. Congratulations Thank are you. your children. Absolutely. How do people get involved and support your efforts? What do they have to do? Who do they call? Who do they reach out to? What meetings can they attend to say, I want to be involved in the education of our Detroit children? Ironically enough, we are having a community meeting this evening at 6 o'clock at Wayne County Community College, the okay. downtown district. But we are beginning to have these conversations so that people know exactly how they can get involved. And I'm so glad you said that. You don't have to have a biological child in the right. district. It could be your, the children that are in your neighborhood, yeah. the children at your church, or just the fact that you understand that when you and I were younger, mm -hmm. there were people, Miss Jones would stay out on the porch, and she would watch you walk to school to make sure nobody was messing with you. Right. I mean, so when you're talking about, I think everybody can have some input into this. Mm. When our children succeed, we succeed. Right. As a city, as a district, we succeed. And I think that's where we have to get people to understand that there's a buy-in that has to take place from everyone. If mm. everybody does just a little, we have board meetings every second Tuesday of the month. The next five will be at Mumford High School. Every second Tuesday at 530, they can get involved that way. They can call the board office, our, our secretary, Karen Morgan, at 313-873-4104 mm. to find out what's up and coming. There are subcommittee meetings for finance and academics. And so there are a ton of things that they can do or reach straight out to the superintendent. Mm. You know, there's something that we're getting ready to kick off a parent uh, Academy. Okay. And in that parent academy, not only are we trying to provide resources for students, but also for parents, guardians, knowing that when our children go home every day. We want to make sure that that's a nice environment for them too. Mm -hmm. You know, and if that's not the case, school should be the environment where they at least feel the most comfortable and safe. Mm -hmm. And so, so now, what's next for Angelique Peterson Mayberry? Because you can, the community relations director of UAW on the school board, and also give a little bit of background exactly because there's somebody, there's a young woman out there saying, wow, you know what, look at all the things that she's doing. I would love to, to walk that path one day. Can you give a little advice to the next generation to just say, here's some things I did to get where I'm at? Well, you know what, one thing I will say is I'm very, very, very conscious of what comes out of this here. Mm -hmm. And there were years ago when I would say that what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I would write the vision. I would say the vision. But I started at Ford Motor Company 23 years ago in housekeeping. Mm -hmm. And I tell that story all the time. I'm very proud of that. I think it has helped make me who I am today. Mm -hmm. The fabric and the substance of who I am started 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was vacuuming and dusting and, you know, changing trash liners. That's where I started. But mm -hmm. I knew that's not where I would stay. Mm -hmm. But I had to take steps in order to continue to climb. So I did go to school and continue my education further and got my bachelor's. And I'm one paper away from my master's right okay. now. But I think that, you know, what I've been able to do 
successfully is continue to stay in prayer. Mm. You know, I don't know what my next step is. Only God knows that, but I'll be obedient, you know, and sometimes it's kicking and screaming. But I think when you know that you're being led from that person, mm. then I think, you know, your path is, is ordained. How much does faith have a role in who you are as a person? It's the fabric of who I am. Mm. There, there's no way that we can make it without it. Mm. And I don't care, you know, where you are in your walk. Your walk is your walk, you know, and I tell young people that all the time as parents and as community advocates for them, we want the absolute best for them, but their journey is their journey. Mm. What we're trying to do is provide a more fertile ground for them so that they can continue to bloom. Well, thank you. Well, I want to say I thank you for, for being such a, a, a bridge for the community. I want to thank you for being a leader in this community, and thank you for coming on Main Street Thank today. you for allowing the opportunity, Ryan. I'm expecting even more fabulous things from you as well. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you. Take care.